um, I was working at St Michael of Belfry Church and and I was actually looking for other jobs. I was a finance manager, so I was looking for other jobs in accountancy, wanting to earn lots of money and potentially become a finance director or something like that, which would have been brilliant. Um, but I'd gone for lots of different jobs and often got to second place in interviews. And there was one job that I had applied for and been headhunted effectively for the job, had an interview. And they said, oh, you were the best in interview, but... And it's like, what's going on? I'm applying for all these different jobs, seem to be doing okay, but not quite getting over the line. Um, and yeah, I ended up having a conversation with God, saying, what is going on, God, because I don't understand this. Um, and then I ended up having a talk with my mum, actually. And now I swear that she said something in there, which is, have you ever thought about being a vicar? Now she swears, she, she didn't say that. Um, so it's quite interesting. But from that point, I suddenly started thinking about who I was and maybe was God calling me to do something else? Um, I, I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to teach English and drama. That was my plan for university. And within a month, God completely changed all of that. Um, so my dad's a vicar, I come from I'm one of those families as well, um, and I had this idea of what vicars were, um, and they were, they were mainly male, old and boring, sorry vicars, <laughs> um, which isn't the case anymore, and exploring um, from the age of 17 to now, um, exploring ordained ministry and whether that was the right thing to do, the more I looked at it, the more I thought... Actually, I think I've probably got some of the gifts for this. Um, I think it's probably the right thing. And genuinely looking forward to it now. Scared to death about bits of it as well. Um, but yeah, looking forward to taking on that role. I believe a calling is a constant niggle that just keeps reoccurring, um, especially through through prayer. I actually, I actually felt quite challenged about being a vicar when I was sat in uh, a service which isn't actually really my tradition I thought it was quite boring and I was sat there thinking this is really boring and then I felt quite challenged just whilst I was in prayer and God was saying what, what do you want to do with this um, I'd had a degree in theology and I was working in the church I loved working with people and I feel like I was just getting nudged towards at least looking into it when I was about 16 I really wanted to um, explore what ministry was about. I saw people at the front, I saw vicars, I saw priests doing things, and I thought that looked great. And to be honest, when I was 16, I thought everybody wanted to do that. And the first sense I had that maybe this was God's call was that actually I realised that hardly anybody else wanted to do that. And so I thought maybe this is uh, unique to me. And I started to explore that. When I was 16, I did work experience at school with a vicar. And so I followed him around for two weeks. And just loved it, loved getting to know people, loved visiting them in their homes, and loved preparing studies, loved preparing sermons and services. It just felt so right and so natural. Yeah, I definitely had a calling. You know, I felt as though God was putting his finger on something and saying, I want you to, to be obedient and to, to go for, you know, forward for this. And um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't accept it to begin with, so it took me seven years. So uh, I, I was very much, uh, I was a bit like Jonah. Um, I, did, I didn't respond when I should have done, and I, I was a bit cheeky. Um, it was kind of, in some respects, it was quite a slow and gradual calling. Um, it was very much an unpicking of um, my um, securities in various different things. And I recognise when I look back that um, God called me in a number of different ways. Um, he spoke through a number of different people. But generally, I'm not actually fearful of an awful lot, or I'm not really worried about an awful lot, because I think starting the journey, I never felt equipped enough. I always, I always used to say, um, God equips the called, doesn't call the equipped. Um, and I think that actually, as long as I'm willing to just say yes, and as long as I'm willing to just say, okay, and we joke, we say that we're obedient idiots, we're willing to do whatever for God. And I think as long as I'm willing to take that step, then God will follow that through and support me in that. Um, I, I said yes. Um, I did that at a Soul Survivor event. I said, okay, God, I recognise this. You're calling me to do this. I'll do it. A very good friend of ours, uh, of mine and my wife, who was, who was ordained a few years ago, she su suggested, go on a vocational weekend, which I did. And it seems really simple, but it was that... So that's what you need to be doing. And it was that, it was actually a combination actually of, of knowing that I was being called to do something, not knowing what that was, 
but asking others and, 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 and an awful lot of prayer and, and, and I think that's when I discovered that actually when you pray you have to also shut up and listen afterwards and it's in the listening when you actually find out what God's plan or what he's revealing to you is going to be. So. I would say God is very kind and very gracious and he is faithful and he won't let you go and if there is a call then he will make sure that that happens and that that follows through. And if there's not, then he is asking us to explore with him, to push doors, to ask questions, to go to um, days where we can hear about ministry, to talk to ministers, to talk to bishops, to ask the question. I think God is a God who is not afraid of us asking him questions. And so it's just important to keep pushing those doors.